Okay, hey guys, it's your boy Dark Reco here with What if Issei was the reincarnation of Kampachi Zaraki or Zaraki Kampachi, whatever you like to call him, but whatever. Uh, I should mention one thing. The reason why I didn't upload yesterday or a couple of days ago, mostly Monday or Tuesday, is because I am sick. Literally, I was. Yeah, I already predicted how I'm gonna get sick. It was accidentally kind of on uh, Saturday morning. When I woke up at 5, because uh, it was cold as fuck, but I didn't have socks, and when I wanted to go turn on the lights, I realized I didn't have socks, and I was touching a very cold-ass floor. So yeah, I got sick that way. But not the point. My throat kind of hurts. I am eating a cough drop, so I can, well, talk a little bit, but yeah. Now, I could go on with the other what-ifs, like, what's it called? What if Issei would, well, had, what's it called? Not had. Yeah, was a darkness user and became a stray. Yes, I gotta go rewatch that. But for right now, I'm gonna do this one. And um, and this one, well, I have a little twist for it, but yeah. But not the point. It's similar to that other one. Maybe the stray one. Maybe Issei might become a stray. Who knows? Who ever knows? But not the point. Uh, what's it called? Let me begin this as what if? Before my throat start hurting. But yeah. I'm also, what's it called, doing kind of schoolwork while doing this, while waiting for the fucking timer, because there's a fucking timer for this shit, and uh, I gotta wait 30 minutes, and then other fucking courses or classes or whatever bullshit, there's like courses, there's like seven of them, and I gotta be waiting for the damn timer, so I can go take the fucking test or whatever, but yeah, it's a pain in the ass, not the point, let me begin into the sweater, let me shut the fuck up, but yeah, so, let me begin into the sweater. But yeah, we go into Issei. Issei right now, he is right now fighting against the Rise of Phoenix. Now, uh, also, before I actually go on, um, what's it called? Before I actually go on with the whole what if, uh, I should mention about what's it called? What if Issei was the reincarnation of Ichigo Kurosaki? I'm actually going to redo it. And I'm going to change it instead of being what's it called? Ichigo's reincarnation. He instead is like the cousin, well, mostly... A family member of like Ichigo's, but yeah, mostly just a cousin. I already have the storyline already planned out for a while. I've been kind of just thinking about it, but yeah. But not the point. Uh, let me begin to what if, sorry, I, I just wanted to mention that out. Sorry, but we go into Issei kind of well fighting against Riser. Now, of course, Riser was basically kicking his ass, and of course, Issei did fall down to the ground. This is where, well, Riser was telling Rias if she doesn't give up now. And become his, then he will, what's it called, barbecue her precious little pond. Now, we go into Issei. Issei's mindscape. Issei say, no, I can't get up. This is where, well, he tried to ask for Drake, but he didn't see anyone. This is a dark plain, uh, what's it called, of lane. Mostly, it's just a dark place. He doesn't see anything. Instead, he sees a yellow bright light. Of course, it worked well. He gets flashed by it, but when he opened his eyes as they're kind of close to them, he sees a big, like, very tall man up there. Buff as hell. His shirt, well, he doesn't really have a shirt. He basically has to, what's it called? His, like, coat kind of showing his muscles. But yeah, of course, he has some bandages. Not really. Pretty much, he has some bandages, but not really. There's some scars showing. His face has, like, about a scar. And one eye, one of his eyes has a scar and uh, what's it called? No eye patch, but it would have had an eye patch. But of course, both his eyes are closed. And of course, they were, well, he got long kind of like black hair. Yeah, long black hair. And this is where, well, like I mentioned, he doesn't have a black coat, but he has a sword next to him. Now, of course, his sword is kind of just like having a bunch of like bandages around it and of course it does have a guard but yeah now this is where well he has a very powerful pressure around him this powerful like power around him this is where well he says confused and of course he has nothing else to do but to actually like walk forward because well he can't get out of here for some reason he can't even leave this place but of course he goes up towards the man and says who the hell are you that's where well 
the person opened his eyes and this will work well and this will work well the person right now opened his eyes showing these yellowish kind of like hazelish eyes this is where well they started glowing and of course the pressure around them started becoming bigger and bigger this is where well mostly the aura entirely of course the pressure itself started pushing Issei down but for some reason Issei kind of felt this aura and what's it called pressure being familiar to him this is where well he tries to like get up but he still is too weak this is where he's doubting himself until he almost has to dodge a slash attack this is where he jumped away Managing to, but he did get a little nick in his what's it called face, mostly a cut. And this is where, when he looks up, he sees the man right now standing very tall, of course, having his sword unsheathed. Of course, right now it's like very sharp, but of course, jagged as hell. This is where, well, he looks at this person right now with widening eyes and says, What the hell are you doing? This is where the person right now chuckles and says, It seems that you are my opponent. But that's not the point. It seems that you are too weak to contain my power. That's probably because you don't use your instincts. Your instincts are telling you to use my power. Give up the humanity that you have. That restraint that you have. The knowledge or whatever. Give up on that. You have to use your human side. Not your perverted side. Not your devil side. Use your human side. That's how you will become stronger. This is where, well, this person basically gives him what's it called, the speech of, what's it called, let me just. Basically telling him a speech about, like, fighting him with a sword. This is where, well, Issei said, I don't have a sword. This is where he accidentally manifests a sword. The similar same as, what's it called, the other person. This is where, well, he warned his eyes and was confused, but he felt this energy being, for some reason, familiar to him. The person itself seemed familiar also to him. This is where, well, he's confused. But this is where, well, the older looking man says, If you don't fight me, I will kill you. I don't care if you have somewhere to be. You have to fight. Fight me, Issei Hiro. This is where, well, Issei doesn't know what to do, but he had to dodge another slash attack. This is where, well, he jumped away. Of course, he felt like his body was a little bit much more powerful like it's getting powerful but he doesn't understand it could be just the adrenaline this is what well he doesn't want to tie he still wants to kind of get it on with well not really get it on he is mostly trying to protect her and other stuff but this is where well he's fighting against this person right now blocking slashes of course this is where his sword was just arm and this is where he was about to get cut which he does and of course he felt like part of his soul kind of left him this is where well he jumped away and of course he was like trying to grab his like chest and of course it gets a huge cut this is where the person sighs and decides to give him a speech this is where well he says this is a battle with swords not some fist fight this is where well as long as one of us is still breathing then this fight is not over <sighs> you are making this well mostly Issei said you're making this into a fight uh, a fight to the death? Why? There's no reason. He said try to uh, protest against, well, mostly this person. You need a reason to fight? The person say with such a maniacal grin. And of course, such an angry stare at the same time. <sighs> Why don't you just accept it? He say, Why don't you accept the power that you have? Start restraining it. This is where, well, you enjoy fighting as much as I do, the person says. You crave power, isn't that right, Issei? Anyone who truly loves power, loves to measure that power in battle, it's simple fact. The question is, do we fight in order to gain power, or do we fight to gain more power in order to fight? Huh, the person just laughs. I haven't figured it out yet. But who cares? Because one thing is cert is for certain. There is no reason we should ever deny it or try to change it. Because we were born this way. You have always wanted to fight. And you will always, w uh, you will always will, Issei. 
Is it where well? It's a part of you. Do you instantly? Well, yeah, you do it instantly. You have no choice but to fight. Because it's the only way to gain power. Fight, Issei. If you want to control that power, take your sword and cut your enemies down. There is no other path. No way to move forward or back. You have to fight, Issei. So, of course, the person screams out straight towards Issei. And this is where Issei... Right now, his eyes started changing from his like normal kind of lightish brown color towards a hazelish color to almost being gold. This is where, well, Issei's hair started kind of going up. It started becoming darker. This is where, well, mostly towards dark brown. This is where, well, he then looks at the person. This is where his sword came back to his hands, manifest back into his hands. This is where he looks at the person with this kind of sinister grin also. You're right. I should fight. There's another way to go back. A battle between powers. I should be fighting you. Isn't that right? Kenpachi Zeraki. The person grins and says, So you finally know my name, kid. Then bring it! This is where they both rush at each other right now, clashing into the middle with their swords. This is where, well, the, an explosion of power happens, but we go into the outside. And to mostly the outside. This is where Rius was about to say, I, I. This is where, well, something happens before she even gets to say it. This is where, well, an explosion of power and a scream of just this, well, mostly a scream of frustration and anger kind of launches from someone's mouth. Ah! Right now screaming and yet this power shot off from this person's body. Right now shooting up to the sky. Right now, crackling this dimension and breaking it itself from the sheer amount of power whoever this person's releasing it from. No one knows. Everyone was shocked, too horrified. Everyone in the underworld, and I mean everyone in the underworld, felt it. That's yes, where, well, everyone in the underworld felt it. That being the four mouths, the four, well, yeah, mouths of the demon lords, <laughs> the demon council. Everyone in the underworld, every demon itself, that meaning the old kind of mouth, uh, mostly the old mounds, they felt the power, even though they were far away from, well, where, what's it called, the underworld would be at. They're at the far corner, but yet they felt this power. Also, in another part of the underworld, mostly called the Gagori, a bunch of these black winged kind of Fallen angels felt the power. The sheer amount of power. Every fallen angel right now widened their eyes and got scared. In an instant. Thinking that the power was itself felt kind of like deathish. Kind of felt like Grim, the Grim Reaper's power. Kind of felt like Hades' power. And yet, somewhere else in the part of the underworld. Well, mostly before going to another part of the underworld. Mostly two people felt it. The person with golden bangs and of course black hair. Having, well, about 12 wings right now behind him. Showing that he's the leader of the fallen angel. But of course, next to him is none other than a female with whitish hair. Of course, having golden eyes and of course, widening her eyes. Feeling the power, just so much power that she kind of has a sinister grin to her fight this person. But of course, kind of feels a little bit warmer in one part of her kind of body. Of course, liquids are kind of falling down, and this is where the other older person kind of notices and says, Wait, what the fuck? Are you guys... This is where he kind of asks his daughter, Are you getting... Oh, this is where he started walking away just because this is such a weird sight to see his daughter You're like that. Nope. Of course, we go into another part of the underworld. Of course, this part of the underworld is much deeper in the underworld. This is where this person has, well, mostly a skeleton kind of figure. And of course, right now, commanding is kind of Grim Reapers to kind of get more souls and send them back to the underworld, blah, blah, blah. Mostly into the undead, but yeah. But of course, he felt his power, and it felt similar to his, but much, much more powerful. Actually, it's almost the same level as Great Red or even past Great Red's power. This is where we go into a dimension about talking about the big red lizard. 
the big red lizard is right now doing stunts in the what's it called dimensional gap. He felt his power after shutting up at there before doing another stunt. This is where this power seems to uh, mostly surpass his own power. This is where we go into another place. Another place that it seems to be a purplish hair, almost a purplish eye girl with kind of a goth outfit. She seems to be kind of 16 or 17 at least. But of course, they were, well, she felt this power. She thought it was kind of, well, uh, mostly great red. Or great red baka, she would like to call him. Of course, this is Orphis, the infinite dragon. But of course, she was confused because this power seems to also surpass her power and great red's power. This is where, well, we go into another place, mostly up in the clouds. Mostly it seems to be a golden gate, but past that golden gate seems to be a bunch of these people with white wings felt the power and it, all of them right now got this right now horrified look because this power kind of felt like death, yet it was much more powerful than that of Hades. This is where, well, a person with goldenish hair and of course having his eyes closed. Right now why his eyes after realizing this power seems to be so much more powerful. Of course, this is where, well, he thought it was a sacred gear, a new sacred gear manifesting. But no, this power felt more like death, more like Hades. But he was confused. He doesn't know if Hades is in battle or not. But of course, he feels it like it's at the underworld, which Hades will be there, but he doesn't know who he's fighting exactly. <clears throat> but yeah, it doesn't feel like Hades. It feels more, more kind of instant, more animalistic, more like... Someone has just actively power that they should have not unlocked in a while. <clears throat> but of course, it worked, Mom. We go into the other pantheons. Other pantheons, even the yokais felt it. A bunch of yokais felt it. Even what's it called, Yakuza. She was right now just looking out and kind of seeing her daughter until she felt this power. This is where other pantheons, like that of well, the North mythology, Indian mythology. China massage you you get the point you get you really get the point okay mostly so many pantheons felt this power and of course they were just right now horrified who just activated that this is where we go back into the underworld of the rated games ah! right now a person is screaming and of course when everyone is done after seeing the yellow light dissipate after a while what riser sees over the edge mostly of the building he sees Issei Hyodo standing back up, but this time he, his hair is much more longer. It's actually much more spiker and it has belts, which is confusing. He now has a black but white, mostly a black coat. Of course, it kind of has a white underneath, but don't worry about that. This is where, well, it has the symbol behind him of that, uh, well, a symbol saying Division 11. Captain, but yeah, that's what I said, but don't worry about that. <laughs> But of course, it worked well. Well, not a white under, no, no, not a white under. It's kind of like a white coat, mostly a black long suit. Don't worry about that. It basically looks like Kampaji's like outfit, okay? Mostly before it goes in Thousand Wars. Don't worry about that. But of course, it worked well. He is right now just kind of grinning with such a malicious grin to his face. His eyes are now a hazelish color. It is worked well. His color of hair isn't black entirely, it's actually dark brown. But this is where, well, he has a sword next to him, and his, like, mostly, like, kind of next to his, like, body, he does have a sword. Of course, it's all bandaged up, and it does have a handle, a golden handle. Mostly, not the golden handle, golden guard. But, of course, the handle's all bandaged up also. This is where, well... Issei grinned straight towards the fried chicken, and this is where, well, he started walking casually. This is where he unsheathed his sword. This is where he swung his sword up to the air. This is where he's holding it with one arm, but then uses his other arm to grab it. Swing his sword down, and a huge yellow light of power just right now shatters the building in an instant. Everything that was on top of it got blown away, even Riser himself. The sheer amount of power that Issei is erupting from his body is just too much. He seems to, mostly this aura is leaking off of him. This power just keeps leaking off of him. But of course, it worked well. Everyone is feeling this, and of course, it seems to dimension itself almost got shattered thanks to that one slash. This is where, well, 
uh, right now, someone with red hair and, of course, baby blue eyes kind of widen his eyes, thinking that maybe the writing games is in trouble. He thinks of his sister, but then he thinks of the other demon named Riser, and then he sees, well, the new person. Mostly cameras itself are trying to, like, see what happened to everyone. <clears throat> this work well. Someone like, well, mostly Sona's worrying about her best friend and her barrage. But this is where, well, what they all see is easy right now just standing there with such a sinister grin. This is where, well, everyone is kind of wiping their eyes. Isn't that the pound of freest? Wasn't he that hurt? What happened to his body? This is where so many people are just kind of confused. Of course, the word, well, Rios was on the ground, but of course she'd been healed by Ozzy, even though Ozzy was kind of hurt also. This is where, well, Rios says, Ozzy, what are you doing? <clears throat> Ozzy said, it's easy. He said, got back up. Wasn't he the one to do all this damage? This is where, well, she's crying with happy tears, but of course a little bit scared at the same time. She's not trying to show what towards her was a call. Mostly leader. Mostly uh, master, her, uh, her king. But yeah, this is where, well, Roger exploded from rubble and says, you little shit, didn't I kill? This is where before he was even able to talk. His shoulder was grabbed by Issei. Issei then swung his sword down right now, slashing Riser. Riser wide his eyes and got launched back down to the ground. This is where, well, he coughed up a little bit of blood, but this is where, well, his regeneration was trying to heal fast enough, but the power itself, so much more power that it just over, it just, what's it called, overpowered the regeneration in an instant. Riser wide his eyes. He can't take Issei lightly no more. Issei said, huh? Did I do that? An accident? Oh, it seems that I'm not holding too much of my power. I don't know how to hold. I thought I was holding all of it back, but it seems I leak it out. I have too much power now that I think about it. Issei said so casually. This is where Riser, he gets up right now sending flames at Issei trying to burn him. But of course, Issei is taking all the flames walking forward. Issei has such a sinister grin. His clothes aren't even getting burned. Riser wipes his eyes and says, what the hell are you? You're no devil. Oh, of course, I'm not a devil. I'm a human. And right now, I have the human instinct to kill. Kill. Slaughter. This is where Issei has such a sinister grin. And Riser gulps after hearing what Issei said. Issei said that he was proud to be a human and he is proud to go instant malicious animalistic half the damn time to slaughter his foes. And also heard that he wanted to kill. This is where, well, Riser didn't care. He then start, he started kind of using more flames. But before he even got to do that again, Issei appeared. This time, Issei started swinging his sword randomly. This time, he just tried to cut him into a million pieces. Riser felt his body right now being cut into a million pieces. His regeneration is taking forever. It's actually taking much more longer than normal. This is where he smashed down to the ground after getting hit with a very bright yellow attack. We'll see a bright yellow slash to the ground. This is where he's coughing up blood. He's saying, Ravel. This is where Ravel appears saying, uh, f Brother, what, what, what do I... Give me your phoenix tears. This is where she nodded. And of course, the where... Well, Ryza puts drinks the phoenix tears. And of course, this is where he powers up. He's now better than ever. This is where he grins malicious and tells Ravel to go. This is where... Well, she nodded. This is where she has a little smirk, but of course still feels the most powerful malicious aura that she ever felt from Issei Hyoto. Issei said, huh? It seems that you actually got him better. Actually, it seems that you might have become stronger. Does that mean that I can fully release my power? This is where Issei now shows his very, very malicious grin. Such a malicious grin that it can even just split the earth itself. This is where... Oh, Riser gets scared a little bit. Even though he's fully back to regeneration, he still gets kind of scared. <clears throat> this is where, well, the Queen of Riser actually appears. And, of course, she has this, like, little bottle next to her. She was about to grab and drink it. But, of course, Issei notices. And Issei says, so, that must be a phoenix tear. Issei disappears in an instant. Just blinks away from Riser itself. This is where Riser says, huh? Where, where did he go? This is where, well... He turns around to see his queen. His queen was cut into two. 
right now into two before she even gets to drink the Phoenix Tears. This is where Issei grabs the bottle itself and right now puts in his mouth and right now eats the bottle itself. I'm drinking the Phoenix Tear but just eat it in the freaking glass. I guess this was supposed to heal my body from all the burns and scars I little got. This is where his body felt much better. And of course, this is where, well, his energy just boosted up. This is where, well, he looks at Riser, Riser wide his eyes. This is where Grace would be is too stuttery to even say, Riser's queen has been eliminated. This is where, well, Riser's like saying, you're a monster. Do you not know this is important to the, what's it called? With the family of the pure blood? This is where Issei said, Do I look like I give a damn? No, I don't. All I care about is murder, killing, and easily ripping my targets into millions of pieces. I don't give a damn about what you request. If you don't, if you don't want to fight, then I'll kill you now. This is where he rushes our Riser with such blinding speed right now, cutting Riser. Riser tries to dodge, but of course got his arm cut off. His regeneration of flames is trying to heal fast enough, but this is where, well, he then almost gets hit again with another huge yellow bright light of slash. This is where, well, the dimension itself seems to be trying to crack itself, but of course, trying to regen. But of course, this is where, well, the power that Issei Hyoto is releasing is too much for this dimension. This is where, well, correct should be wind her eyes. This is where, well, everyone is seeing this battle. It's not even a battle. It's a one-sided massacre now. It's no longer a battle of eco power. It wasn't even a battle from eco power no longer. Mostly Riser was the one to be advantaged from Issei Hyoto. But now Issei is a leagues, just leagues above Riser itself. And of course, it's massacring, just slaughtering Riser into a million pieces. That Riser can barely fight back. Actually, Riser has well tried to fight back against Issei. But Issei is just swinging his sword once, and of course, it just obliterates Riser. Riser tries to even fight back, but no, he can't fight back. This beast, this creature, no, whatever it is, it's not a fucking human at all. This is where, well, Riser right now uses the most powerful flames in his body. This is where he's right now covering his one hand with these white flames and saying, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to end your life. I'm going to make Rhea's mine. She's nothing but a fucking object for me to conquer. This is where he swing his hand straight well towards well Issei's sight, and he just bursts his hand with white flames and says, "Die!" This is where he has such a sinister grin, mostly riser. This is where it hits Issei. That shit didn't even affect him. The flames might have burned his clothes, might have burned accidentally his like coat, but Issei is still just standing there with such a malicious grin. Issei said, oh, was that the best you have? Then I should show you my power. I should show you what I can do. This is where Issei's power started just increasing. And of course, shattering, well, the radiance itself. Started breaking the dimension itself. This is where Riser widened his eyes until Issei appears right now, swinging his sword. Right now, cutting Riser. This is where, well, Riser couldn't even dodge. This is where, well, Issei started swinging his uh, sword randomly now. Right now, just trying to cut him into nothing but a million pieces. This is where, well... Riser is now going down to the ground, but this is where he gets hit by another large yellow slash. This is where he gets smashed to the ground without a care in the world. Issei is right now grinning. He appears on the ground. Of course, he was flying with a damn care, I should mention. He didn't need his fucking wings. He was just flying up there like he was fucking God. Which some people literally thought he was literally fucking God. But this is where Issei, he appears right in front of Riser Phoenix. Well, it's time for your death. It seems that you are unable to fight me. And since of you're unable to fight me, then you're dead. It's an automatic death. So I should slaughter you. This is where Issei has his sword all the way up to his, like, mostly head. And, of course, he was about to swing it down until Raffle Phoenix appears, saying, No, stop it! This is where Issei said, Raffle, go! This is where Issei said, Ah, oh, so a little girl like you dares to block my way. Well, I'll kill you and your brother, since you decide to, well, stand in my way. This is where, well, Raffle widened her eyes. This is where, well, Issei was about to just slaughter both of them without a care in the world. Such a malicious grin. This is where, well, Raffle right now gets scared. She couldn't do anything. 
even if her, even if she had the power of the phoenix power, we'll say she does, but it's not as powerful as her brother. And even if her brother could do anything towards Issei, it didn't do even jack shit to him. That's, that's just how Bubs League's Issei is now is. This is where Issei is about to just tear them both apart. This is where, well, Rhea screamed out saying, Issei, stop! This is where Issei turns around and sees Rhea right now standing there. Right now, even though she's a little bit hurt, even when it's called Ozzy's there, they see Issei and his, like, look. His look of, what the fuck do you want? This is where, well, mostly Rhea's almost just, like, stutter back after seeing the look. It's no longer Issei's look. Instead, it looks straight up like Kapachi's. This is where, well, Issei then turns towards, mostly to see Raffle and what's called Riser disappearing in blue light. Because mostly Riser does give up because, well... He doesn't see any other way to go, but just to leave because she, because not she, mostly he doesn't want what's call Raffle Phoenix to die with him. So, of course, this is where, well, he basically said, we give up. This is where, well, he started to paint the blue light. He said, you little shit. I was supposed to kill you. You were supposed to be my first kill. He says, right now, grinning his teeth. But this is where he she back his sword. And, of course, this is where, well, he's just so goddamn annoyed. This is where, well, this dimension is cracking anyways. So, of course, Issei stomp his leg into the ground. This is where he just shatters the fucking thing itself already. This is where everyone started falling. But, of course, this is where, well, mostly Rias and, uh, well, Rias does grab Ozzy on using her wings. Issei is falling down to the ground with a damn care in the whole world. This is where he launches down there like a fucking meteor shot. He smashes to a ground with a care in the world. He say he has such a malicious grin and says, Who wanna fight me now? This is where there's no one there in front of him. And this is where he says, Aw, oh, you motherfuckers. I thought I felt a lot of fucking signatures here. Pussies. <laughs> this is where, well, he say he's just so fucking annoyed, but yeah. Now we go into mostly. Well, the battle. Well, not really a battle. Mostly, well, a kind of festival somewhat. This is where, well, the people who are kind of there, mostly it's a party, not a festival. A party? About, what's it called? Real Scrimmery's Freedom? There's a bunch of devils on edge. The reason why they're on edge is, well, yeah. On edge? No, on edge. I can't speak. But of course, it went, well, the reason why so many people are just super on edge, well, age, whatever, pretty much there's easy. Who is just standing near a wall, well, not even a wall, a pillar, and like laying his back there, and of course having both of his arms crossed. Now, the clothing that he's wearing is basically the same clothing that he was wearing, what's it called, fighting against Rise or Phoenix. He has such a scary look. One, well, both of his eyes are closed, and yet there's still auras leaking off of his body. He doesn't really know how to control it because he doesn't have the eye patch of, well, Kampachis yet. Don't worry about how that's gonna work. This is where, well, so many people are just afraid of him. They're really calling him the ultimate pawn because holy fuck, no. <laughs> this is where, well, Riser Phoenix is right now in the hospital, really fucking hurt. This is where, well, Riser Phoenix and even Raffles Phoenix's mother is kind of looking at how Riser is wounded. This is where she's having a little smirk towards Ravel and saying, oh, Ravel. What if I tell you to go after the Red Dragon Emperor? Mostly, Issei Hyoda, will you do it for me? This is where, oh, Raffle seems scared. This is where, well, Riser tries to protest against his mother because that being is a monster, not a fucking dragon. There's no way he's a fucking dragon in the first place. He did have such a dragon ore, but hell no. This is where, well. Issei is still near the pole, uh, well not near pole, mostly near the pillar. But we go into everyone else. Everyone else is, like, dressed up nicely, mostly Kiba, Konako, Akano, Azia, and even Rias. Issei is in his fucking attire, like it's a Soul Society retired. Mostly, not Soul Society, mostly, uh, Captain, what's it called, mostly, 11th Division Captain, uh, what's it called, retired. Mostly, he's in his coat. He has his sword. He's ready to murder when anyone dares to fight him. Mm -mm. They're gonna die. <laughs> but yeah. This is where, well, everyone is having such an uneasy presence. This is where Kiva tries to talk to Issei. And of course, this is where Issei just ignores him. Konako and Akano, well, Konako says, 
uh, pervert. This is where Issei doesn't even really twitch or does any antics towards uh, Koniko, which Koniko was surprised. His emotionless face and such an angry looking expression most of the time is what's it called something that she gets afraid of because it's no longer her kind of senpai being a proprietor or any of that or any of that Esther, what the hell but of course Akuna tries to do her sadistic side and of course saying ara ara Issei you have so much more power are you ever gonna punish me for being such a bad this is where well Issei ignores her entirely just ignores everyone because they're quite annoying so yeah this is where well we go into most of you, Rios and Ozzy are seeing this. Now, of course, this is where Ozzy wanted to go talk to, well, Issei. But she's a little bit scared of Issei's side. He became more and more different than ever than she ever expected. This is where, well, uh, what's it called? Arias right now is thinking of going to talk to her pawn just to kind of get him towards to answer her. And of course, where well, she doesn't really know if she could do that because her pawn acts a little bit more different than normal. When I say a little bit, I mean he's completely different. He's no longer the same pawn as ever she thought of, the same perverted pawn. But of course, where up well, behind her appears someone named Serdax or Serzax, yeah. Serzax is right now talking to Rias, and this is where he goes up to the pawn himself. Mostly Issei Kyoto. Let's see where, well, Sir Zack says, Do you like anything, uh, well, any wish for me to grant Issei Kyoto? Issei has his eyes still closed, but he opens himself. This is where, well, Issei has one of his eyes open. This is where, well, his eye is still a kind of lightish brownish color. Of course, this is where, well, he looks at the older man and says, I guess you can just free Rias from her stupid marriage. This is where, well, Sir Zack says, <laughs> okay, is there anything else? Hmm. No, not really. This is where, well, Sir Zack says, okay. Hmm. Do you want to have your own parage? Issei says, hell no. This is where, well, everyone was just shocked to believe that Issei, he is different. He doesn't like having his own parage. It was something that was called Rios was actually shocked to believe that Issei would deny something like that. Issei doesn't really want to have his own parage. He doesn't really care. Truly, he just doesn't give a damn. Is it where, well, Sir Zack says, would you like anything else? Hmm, I guess a good battle will ha uh, happen. I want a battle to the death. So would you accept it or not? Sir Zack says, no. This is where everyone just went. I didn't have Sir Zex deny that shit real fast. Like, yeah, no, I don't think one of the four mouths want to even fight against Issei. It might take all four mouths or even what's it called, alliance with them with heaven. Or even alliance with, Gor uh, well, mostly uh, Gorgory to fight against Issei if Issei ever decides to become a stray. Which they pray to the, well, they pray to God even though God is dead. Well, they don't know about that, but of course a bunch of people get headaches. <laughs> but yeah, they're just praying to their old creator, their successor. And, but of course they're getting headaches. But yeah, that's the word. Well, Issei is sign doesn't really give a damn, but yeah. This is where Issei is just walking away, just to go back to, well, the human world somehow. He doesn't care. This is where, well, uh, Sir Zex was about to ask him if he was going to Rias, but of course Rias was having to ride the uh was called griffin by herself alone of course the work well she was just shocked to believe Issei change in just a couple of minutes between the uh, battle between him and riser now of course the work well does it work well Issei gets back to the human world and of course the work well he actually is living with his parents of course his parents doesn't question the change because Issei has a different attitude entirely of course, I should mention that Issei did change from being 5'7 to being at least 5'10. But yeah, he kind of had a growth spurt. But yeah, don't worry about that. He will get to the same height as Kampachi later. Don't worry about that if you're wondering. Is he going to be 6, well, 6 uh, feet 6 inches? Yeah, he is going to be as tall as Kampachi. So don't worry about that. My man is going to be as big as Kampachi when he gets older. But don't worry about that right now. So we go into Issei kind of just living with his parents. Of course, the work well. 
he kind of gets to his room, tears down a bunch of shit that he doesn't really need, because truly he doesn't care about this room. It's quite annoying. It actually pisses him off, and how perverted and weak he was, and how he didn't have to fight with instance of murderous intent. He lived like a normal human when he should have fought like a creature, like a beast, like a true human. But yeah, this is where well, he say he goes to school the next day. Of course, there were Rias to try to live with him. But of course, Issei didn't really want that shit. So yeah. Because Issei was thinking of moving out. He didn't really care that much. He just packs up some stuff and of course thinking to move out. But yeah. But this is where, well, Issei is kind of like... He's been thinking more because even though he's not as smart as... Was like, well, Kapachi isn't that smart. Well, I mean, he does have an IQ, but... He sometimes doesn't think with his brain, he usually thinks with the uh, human or well, instinct to kill. But yeah, but don't worry about that. Of course, Issei did kind of get lost and get into school, but don't worry about that. <laughs> it did take him about an hour to get there. And of course, when the gate was closed, thanks to someone literally closing the gate in front of him, well, he broke that shit down and was about to kill the person. But of course, the person just ran like hell. <laughs> Issei chased after him, but the motherfucker got away. This is where, well... We go into Issei, just go into the ORC. This is where, well, or not ORC, what the fuck is, what the hell is the ORC? What the, no, the Research of Cock Club. Fuck, I keep forgetting the word, letters. Fuck, I, I don't remember. I don't care. This is where, well, Issei is right now sitting on the couch, and of course, this is where, well, Issei is waiting for a mission to probably go out there and kill, but whatever, kill Australia, whatever. Because he's completely bored. This is where, well, he's thinking of literally living, leaving school just to go into a full-time devil and kill, like, some strays or whatever. But this is where, well, we go into, we'll see everyone being there. Even Issei, but yeah. This is where, well, Rias is telling everyone about the contract and, of, of course, and blah, 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 what to do. Of course, this is where, well, Issei asks if there's any stray devils for him to literally slaughter. Which Rias kind of switch up and says no, but can't she just do the co uh co what's it called the contract thing? This is where well, Issei scoffs and gets annoyed because Issei doesn't really like doing those contract things. They're quite boring, in his taste. Which yeah, this is where Issei then thought of something. Issei really thought of something that really really made him chuckle a little bit. Such a evil chuckle. This is where oh. Rhea switch off because she heard that evil chuckle. Issei right now has a malicious grin in his look. And of course, is where Issei said, Okay, if I can't find a stray by myself, or I'm not ordered to do one, then I'll just become a stray myself. Issei said with such a malicious grin, knowing that no one here will actually be able to stop him. Even Rhea as well, she horrified. Hearing that Issei will literally become a stray because, well, he has nothing to do. Issei said, Well, I should be going then. Well, I'll become a stray. You can tell your brother that I will love to be hunted down. That means I get to slaughter and fight strong people. <laughs> this is where, well, Issei just chuckles and just walks away. Mostly opens the door and walks away. Rhea's ghost, because now that Issei seems that he wasn't, like, wasn't caught. He seems to not, was it caught, well, be, uh, like, making a joke. He's actually becoming a stray. Because, well, he has nothing to do in school. Everything in school life is so boring. His friends are boring. All the girls are boring. Whatever. He's actually becoming more like a Pachi, More sinister, more murderous. And he hasn't had the same, what's it called, time span to actually, like, be bored out of his fucking life. Because, yeah, he doesn't really care. He wants to kind of kill, murder, and doesn't care. So, yeah. Of course, the white well. Issei is leaving the school, leaving the occult research club, of course. Get into his house, getting some stuff packaged, and of course, telling his mom and dad that he's moving out. This is where, well, they were actually happy, but of course, this is where they then talk about how Ozzy is going to be alone and blah blah blah, and how he's being a bad husband. Issei looked at them and flipped them off. He didn't care. Then fucking fight me about it. This is where, well, they both were shocked at how Issei reacted and other stuff. But so, well, Issei didn't care that much. 
Oh, is a nice girl, yes, but B doesn't really care. He truly doesn't care about love or anything. Actually, he doesn't even care about lust. He only cares about the lust of battle. So, of course, this is where, well, he decides to kind of go into becoming a strain. He's not going into the greed of power or anything. He just cares about battling. So, fight him, motherfuckers. This is where, well, Reyes did send a message towards the cause Sir Zex. And Sir Zex says, yes, my little cute, uh, what's it called, sister? That's where he appears. Um, Issei Hyoto has become a strain. This is where, when, uh, what's it called, Sir Zex's face was happy. He then twisted into a horrified look. And d d d wait, what? Yes, he said that send some devils, send some people, send hunters to go after him. But all he wants is a good battle. So that's why he became a stray, because he knows that, well, people would go after him. Uh, 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 uh. Sir Zex right now pales and, of course, passes the fuck out. Right now, there's like, uh, what's it called? Foam is coming out of his mouth right now with a horrified kind of look. He's right now just, oh, 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 oh. but yeah. This is what, oh, Rhea says, brother, are you okay? Uh, uh, uh. But yeah, he's just gone. This is where, oh, everyone who has kind of got to that with the car, mostly, mostly Gracie B, when she heard about this, she is kind of poor, but also, because his power is too, like, powerful to be a normal human. But yeah, he says, it's like now walking around with the car, mostly the forest, slaughtering any stray that he sees, it doesn't care. But yeah, this is where, well, he decides to leave Cool Town to go into another town, but yeah. But he does that, but of course, kind of exploring. It's quite interesting to explore. It seems that that's his kind of second hobby now. He isn't fully like Kampachi, but he is still Kampachi. Just Kampachi's reincarnation. So, of course, his very first thing is to, what's it called, slaughter, and then his second thing is to kind of explore. So, of course, he's literally exploring what's it called, Japan. While being a straight. While anyone can literally attack him and he'll be happy. In his words, come on, fuckers, attack me. You know you want to. But, yeah. He's literally letting himself be the biggest target and anyone can literally attack him. Can be a god, can be, well, anyone. Doesn't matter. He will literally live to fight him. But, yeah. But of course, we go into EC kind of getting into uh, what's it called? Mostly kill. The not kill town. Uh, not kill cool town. Uh, what was it? Tokyo. Uh, wait. Go into Kyoko. I, I just forgot out what was the other name from Tokyo. Kyoko. He gets into Kyoko City, and of course, this is where he's looking around, seeing a lot of stuff, getting to a shrine, and he's looking at it. Before he gets attacked by, well, these yokai. This is where yokai says, who are you? You seem to be a double stray. This is where Issa says, yes, I am a double stray. He doesn't care. He admits that shit instantly. This is where they attack him. Well, this is where Issa right now pulls out his sword and says, die then. Issa grins and says, die? Ooh, is this a battle to the death? Fine, I'll kill you all. This is where Issa starts slaughtering them. Who had a damn care in the world? Dead, dead. You people are nothing to me. This is where he stabs one in the hearts, and this is where people are just horrified. This is where the yokai starts to run away. Until he sent a huge yellow blast right to them. Mostly a huge yellow slash to annihilate them. And then he just chuckles. And then he becomes depressed a little bit. Because none of them gave him a good battle. It was only one minute there. And one minute battling. But yeah, it was quite pathetic. What's the word? Well, he say is walking around. But this is where, well. Issei is getting up to this hill because he found a giant stairs. Of course, it seems kind of like ruined the stairs. But of course, he just walks up it thinking it might lead him somewhere. Do more interesting. When he gets up there, he sees a bunch of guards, a bunch of yokai guards. A bunch of yokai guards notice him and try to kill him. Issei grins and says, ooh, a battle to death? Bring it! This is where Issei slaughtered them in an instant. This is where he smashes one of the bodies through a door. Mostly through kind of a large door. The door gets busted open and there's still more yokais. Yokai start trying to fight him, but of course they get slaughtered in an instant. Issei says, come here, fight me to the death. <laughs> you know, so well, he has such a malicious laugh or grin. And of course, this is where all of them are just getting killed in an instant. This is where, well, 
Issa gets to a jail cell after kind of getting lost in this place. Yes, he got lost on accident. But of course, he went, well, he was looking for more yokai to fight him, even though he can't sense her chakra. He can literally try to just find them by running randomly. Until he ran into a site that kind of made his blood kind of boil. He sees a yokai kind of abusing this, like, female yokai. This female yokai kind of has... Eight tails, of course, mostly, not eight tails, nine tails kind of pinned up to a wall, mostly stabbed with, like, these nails. And, of course, it's, like, older looking yokai is kind of using a whip to kind of hit her, which, well, he's chuckling, saying, you stupid fucking descent of that fucking dem demon, what's it called, demon nine tails, you're dead, you're stupid bitch. This is where, oh, he's hitting hit her with a whip, and this is where the girl is kind of crying. Of course, she can burning like cry because her tears are turning to blood. Well, yeah, they're already blood. Really. And of course, the word, well, she tries to say stop, but of course, she has something like a gag in her mouth, and of course, she can't even scream or do anything. This is well, the older yokai say, "Now, I should kill you. You know, before I kill you, I should definitely then take your V card." For this word, well, before he even gets to do anything, he felt something kind of grab his arm. This is where two is to sit, and when he turns around to see what he kind of looks up, he sees something horrifying. Someone with yellow eyes, yellow glowing eyes, and this, well, looking grin. Well, it's not even a grin, it's just, it's a frown. Literally, it's just this, just huge frown, and of course, this tech marks, and of course, very angry look. That's where, well, he goes, uh, who the hell? This is where he gets his neck just grabbed. And of course, this is where Issei pulls out his sword and say, die. This is where he swings his sword once, and of course, he cuts this man into two in an instant. Sing! But yeah. This is where, well, the man died in an instant. <clears throat> this is where he gets his body thrown into two parts, and he didn't care that much. This is where, well, Issei gets to the girl, and of course, the girl seems to be smaller than him. But not that small. Of course, seems to be similar age to his age. But yeah. This is where, well... Issei kind of takes out the nails and, of course, makes the tails kind of, like, flow around her body. Of course, this is where she seems to be unconscious. But, of course, the tail seems to kind of, even though she's unconscious, she seems, the tail seems to just move by her, uh, by themselves. This is where they attack Issei, stabbing him, but he really doesn't care about the pain. Actually, it makes him happy to believe that. Even if she's unconscious, she's still very, well, willing to fight. Having the same spirit of fighting to the death. But of course, this is where, well, Issa takes her down from the, what's it called, chains that she's, her hands were kind of being held up. And of course, this is where, well, even there's chains on her legs, kind of like these iron balls, kind of um, having chains on them, kind of making sure that she doesn't escape. But yeah, of course, this is where, well, she also has the gag, and of course, she did have a blindfold, and, well, even though she had blindfold, there was, like, blood tears appearing, but yeah. This is where, well, she got taken all that off, and of course, pretty much, she looks like, what's it called? So, so she kind of looks like this. This is where, well, she has nine tails, and of course, her nine tails are kind of black with red, but of course, her hair is also black with red also. Of course, this is where, well, she's kind of like... Well, just sitting there, of course, having sleep. But this is where her tails are still trying to attack Issei. Which it is, it is cutting him, but he really doesn't care. This is where he's kind of just picking her up and, like, carrying her out. This is where there's still a bunch of yokais, but when they see Issei, they start running. Because this man is all bloody yet. He's having the nine tails, like, demon fox free. This is where so many people are just running and trying to just get away. Because if she kind of releases her true form, she probably would have slaughtered them. This is where, well... A bunch of them just fucking dips. They run. They don't care about this shit no more. This is where, well, we go into Issei kind of being out in the forest. Of course, near a lake, a river. And of course, he is taking a, well, he's not near a lake. He's near a, what's it called, a waterfall. And of course, this is where, well, the water is falling upon his body, of course, cleaning out the wounds or kind of like cuts and blood that he has. Which he kind of heals pretty fast, even though he doesn't have that much of a strong regeneration, but yeah. But of course, he's healing. And of course, the work, well, he's just sitting under there. And this work, well, the person kind of wakes up. Her name is, uh, wait. Her name is Akagi. And of course, the work, well, 
she wakes up and doesn't wear, uh, um, she's kind of looking around, doesn't wear, well, she kind of noticed with the car clothes that isn't hers, and of course, she is kind of like wrapped around, but it's mostly a coat, which is kind of considered her warm, warm, and that's how she slept for so long, doesn't wear, well, she kind of got up, she sees that her body is still having blood on it, which she kind of starts washing up, but she starts to notice the coat. First, it's not hers, and it just kind of shows 11 Division uh, Captain Squad coat. But yeah, that's where, well, she says, what the hell is that? This is where you say, sir, to kind of clean himself for using some fire magic. Yes, he kind of met Drake after a while, but yeah. But this is where, well, Drake says, don't know why one of my container hosts literally becomes stray. But whatever, it's quite the most interesting thing I ever fucking... You know, I'm not going to question most of the time, okay? Drake doesn't question. Because he, he's actually happy that one of his container hosts literally decides to fucking become a strike. He has other, well, he kind of had other containers that literally became a demon and decide to kind of fight for whatever bullshit reason, like a hero. Now, this man, the only thing that he feels from Issei was first lust and now lust for battle. But yeah. Lust for Opa, now uh, lust for battle, but yeah. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about the change. He can actually talk to a host so much better. So much fucking better, but yeah. This is where, well, um, Issei kind of, uh, like, learned some fire magic from, well, Drake. Pretty fast, but yeah. This is where, well, he kind of starts using that fire magic to kind of, like, dry himself. This is where he's getting towards his, like, coat and other stuff. Well, he kind of has, like, a shirt underneath, but yeah. But, of course, he's getting to his coat and other stuff, and that's where he sees the female fuck. That's where Issa says, oh, you're awake. That's where you see he kind of has, like, his hand up a little bit, kind of waving at her. That's where she wide her eyes and says, y you're not afraid of me? That's where she seems having, like, a scared kind of tone. <laughs> Issa says, huh? No, why would I be afraid of you? I'm surprised you're not afraid of me. That's the word, well, she says, why would I be afraid of you? If you're not afraid of me, then I guess I can just sit here. This is where, well, Issei says, sure, do whatever. You can clean up also near that waterfall. I use the waterfall just to clean up some of the blood that you mostly cut me. This is where, well, she kind of apologized to us. Issei says, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I'm sorry, I didn't have control of my toes. Issei says, it's all okay. I don't really care. This is where, well, she nodded. And of course, this is where she goes to wash up at the stream. And of course, she does use her sensory just in case he might be like a peeping Tom. And notice that he's nowhere near. He's mostly getting fish, which surprised her. Mostly any normal guy. She also noticed that he seems to be the same age as her. But of course, anyone normal, like a guy or anything, will probably try to peep at her. But he says, isn't that the same as what well, normal? This is where, well, he catches some food. And this is where he says, starts kind of cooking it. Mostly using to a fire that he learned from Drake, but yeah. This is where, well, Drake says, I'm surprised it didn't go, like, check on her body. Are you really the same Issei? No, motherfucker, the name's Kompachi. Issei said with such a sort, well, mostly a, a sort, what was that called, word? Fuck, I can't remember. But pretty much, just sarcastic tone. Yeah, sarcastic tone. This is where, well, Drake says, okay, whatever, kid. That's the word, well. He says, says, if you want to go peek on her, you can go peek on her then. I'm a dragon stuck in a gauntlet. I wonder how I'm going to be walking out this freaking gauntlet. I can chop my arm off and you can go see her. This is where Trick says, you crazy son of a bitch. He says, said, yeah, I might be crazy. I don't care. This is where, well, she kind of came back. Of course, half her clothes are still kind of ripped. But she uses magic to kind of uh, repair it. But yeah, this is where, well. She kind of noticed Issei doesn't use magic to repair his clothes. He didn't really care, but yeah. This is where, well, she sat down just to eat some fish, but yeah. This is where, well, Issei is eating fish, and this is where, well, she asks for his name. Issei thinks about it. He then smiles and then says, Zaraken Kapachi, at your service. Oh, well, didn't say it like very gently. He kind of just says Zaraki Kapachi, or Kapachi Zaraki, whatever you like to call me. This is where she nodded. And of course, this is where, well, she kind of continues eating, but yeah. No, so where, well. Issei was about to take a nap. Of course, it's where, well. She decides to snuggle up with Issei after Issei kind of just, like, fall asleep first, but yeah. 
she noticed it's kind of cold. And of course, decided to take eat this kind of body heat, but yeah, by kind of being next to him, but yeah. But we go into the next day, and of course, Issei and Will, Akia, are kind of just going around, well, Kyo, uh, what's it called? Kyo City, just to see, well, just to find some people that mostly Akia are looking for, but yeah. Other than that, I'm going to leave it off here. I'm still very sick, but other than that, bye, see ya, and yeah.